Henry Nguyen, he was a writer, and he also was a Christian life teacher at uh, Harvard and Yale. And he eventually gave up his, uh, his career in order to help people that uh, were physically and mentally challenged. And he goes on to write this story about, about an angry man. Nguyen says that, that this man sat in front of him and that he was in his early 60s and there was these deep lines on his face and he had unkept hair and mostly Nguyen says he noticed that he had these deep burned out eyes that just showed that, that he was an unhappy man. As they were there, they, they talked about the weather and, and the old man said that it was hot and there was, the humidity was killing him and Nguyen obviously tried to cheer him up by saying, hey, we can use a little heat and, and uh, humidity is kind of like a free sauna. Uh, but he didn't hear him. He, he didn't even smile. He, in fact, he just began to talk about a colleague who left him years ago and about uh, a friend who hadn't called him for months. And uh, he goes on to also describe that this pain and anguish that he had many years ago and, and even his neighbor, that when he tries to take a nap, doesn't even allow him to sleep because his neighbor's too noisy. Uh, Nguyen says as well that his presence was literally like an occasion for this man to just pour out as many complaints. In fact, a few times, Nguyen tried to interrupt him and say, yeah, but, but he didn't, even, he didn't get anywhere with that. He just kept trying to, to prove that, that there were no, no buts and that things were in fact as bad as, as he thought. And so he, he, he pointed out to him, this old man, the corruption in the world, the government just corrupt, uh, the war in Iraq, the starvation in Africa, the violence in the Middle East, and, and that this world is falling apart. In fact, the signs are everywhere. It's, it's the truth that you look in the newspapers, you listen to the radio, um, you, it, it, wherever you look, whatever you hear, that that's the truth, that that's really, that the world really is a bad place. And Nguyen said he felt this creeping sensation of this, this darkness just around him. And he thought, where is this darkness coming from? And, and he realized that he was face to face with this angry man who's consumed by this anger that uh, this flare-up of bitterness and his remarks over his friends and his enemies were very real. And that his anger it actually settled in the innermost part of his being, this resentment. And so he, he just remained silent because out of this deep feeling that he had, that he was powerless in such, such presence of so much rage. And so he realized as well that this anger was an accumulation of of, of 60 years just in his soul that just fermented and it made him a victim. I mean, he, he in fact accepted the role of a victim. He, he wanted to be a victim. I mean, as, as, he, as he was someone, as a victim, listen, he could, he could talk endlessly about all the injustices done to him. He can complain about everyone and, and everything. He, uh, he had a place in this world. He had an audience that would empathize with him as a victim. Neil says that when he returned home, he, he found himself all alone, and that he noticed that his, that his body, he began to shake. And he, he wrote that, I lay down on my bed, and I stared at the ceiling. And he says, then he saw the angry man again. He said, he, he saw him not sitting in front of me, but he was walking slowly, just bent over and pulling this enormous load behind him. He groaned and, and, and moaned as he just moved forward slowly. Even at times, it just seemed uh, to almost lose his balance, but he only stopped long enough to look back and to start pulling again. He said, I saw this man, he was bearing an unbearable burden. It, it was a scary sight, so frightening that my body began to sweat and shiver and, and the burden the burden, he said to himself, what is this burden? And the answer actually emerged. His burden is all those people that he's angry with. And he's, he's literally condemned to pulling them behind them. And he said he saw them all. He saw the men, the women, the children, the friends, all of them emerging out of his, out of his long past. He said they, they were chained to each other, and, and then they were chained to this man. And, and as he kept looking at the old man, there was this voice that returned to him and said, you're the man. You're that angry man that you just met. And don't you see that you, you can't let go of your burden? You are the burden carrier. 
And he said, I don't want this. I don't want this burden. Take it from me. I, I don't want this. And then gradually as he began to plead, he saw that, that the kind of uh, burden he was carrying, if it was taken from him, it would be like taking a boat from a fisherman or, or, or taking the keys from a janitor or, or taking the, the, a car from a chauffeur or better yet, uh, taking the bricks from a builder. Uh, who, who would I be without my anger, he thought. Who would I be without anyone to judge or condemn? Who would I be without my complaints or rejections or enemies? I am a victim. I am the victim. I'm the one who can't survive without my burden. Because my burden is my showcase, he said. It's, it's my bag of tricks. It's, it's my instrument of magic. He thought indeed, yes, it's my identity. He realized, I have become my burden. I, I'm the angry man.